created by Hollow and Mechanicals, the Electrostaff was a pole-like melee weapon, hence its nickname of the Electropole. They were used by the CIS's IG-100 Magna Guards during the Clone Wars, and later by Imperial Riot Troopers and Heavy Troopers during the Galactic Civil War. But what exactly are Electrostaffs? Welcome to the Karen Kazan Star Wars Weapons Lore Episode 7, The Electro Staff. Although capable of penetrating and neutralising ray shields, Electro Staffs were mostly used as blunt force melee weapons. They were designed to be longer than most lightsaber blades, allowing the user to dual Jedi whilst remaining out of their range. Electro Staffs were able to resist lightsaber attacks due to their makeup of the Frick alloy. Just like force pikes, the staff was tipped with electricity emitters with different power settings, ranging from a stunning jolt to a deadly charge. Because of the different settings, the electro staff could be used to incapacitate the opponent instead of killing them outright, or even as a torture device. On the contrary, when switched to the highest power setting, the weapon was powerful enough to stop a being's heart after just 5 seconds of direct contact. However, to do any real damage, the user had to strike either the chest, throat or head of the opponent, as shown when Jedi Master Shaq T withstood 4 strikes on her arms and shoulders, allowing her to continue fighting against a large horde of Magna Guards despite being in very obvious pain. The Separatists equipped their IG-100 Magna Guards with Electro Staffs to guard General Grievous and Count Dooku during the Clone Wars. The droids also helped abduct Supreme Chancellor Palpatine in 19 BBY and capture Jedi Council member Eve Koff, who they tortured. The specific Electro Staffs used by Magna Guards were manufactured by Bactoid Armor Workshop. They had a lining of focusing rods across the shaft that fed into a power cell and electromagnetic field generator which energised a power cycling coil. This is what produced the purple or yellow sparks and beams that were visible at the ends of their weapons. Not all of the Electro Staffs produced by Bactoid Armor Workshop were constructed of frick due to the cost of the alloy. During the Galactic Civil War, the scavenger Sarko Plank wielded an Electro Staff, fighting Luke Skywalker with it on Deveron whilst the young Jedi was exploring the Temple of Edith. Plank proved almost a match for the young Jedi in training, coming close to killing Skywalker with the staff several times. However, Luke destroyed the scavenger's control box and sent him and his Electro Staff hurtling into a pit leading to the Temple's underlevels. Around 1 and 2 BBY, Riot Troopers and Heavy Troopers of the Galactic Empire were known for using Electro Staffs. They were able to resist lightsaber attacks using Cortosis, as shown when they engaged Darth Vader's apprentice Starkiller as well as his clone. Such encounters occurred on Kamino, Felucia, Kashyyyk and Kato Naimoidia. Unfortunately, they failed to stop the apprentice and later his clone from fulfilling their objectives. Now it's time for this week's question. Do you think Electro Staffs were good weapons to counter lightsabers, or do you think there were better alternatives? Let me know in the comments below. In the previous episode I asked if the DL44 would be your sidearm of choice, and I got a ton of responses, so thanks for that. Although some people would prefer another pistol, most would like to have Han's trusty blaster for backup, which is fair enough because it's one of the coolest weapons in the Star Wars galaxy. Don't forget everyone to tell me what weapon I should cover next in the series. Thanks for watching, and for more Star Wars weapons lore, keep a look here. To the Kangas Following the duel of Mandalore, Sidious took Maul as his prisoner and brought him to the remote world of Stygian Prime, where the CIS operated a prison in the mountains. However, on Amex's orders, Maul's Death Watch pursued the craft, intending to rescue their leader. 